<laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to Create Your Life, Going Beyond Mediocre to Infinite Possibilities. I'm Alora Canfield, your host, and I'm so excited that you're all here with me today. And I'm extra excited to have Stephanie Richardson here with us, and she is amazing, as you'll see in a, in a, in a moment. Um, she's a potent creator of change, and I'm just so glad and happy that she's here with us to share um, some of the tools that she uses in her life, some of the processes and tools that she uses in her life to go beyond mediocre, to create infinite possibilities in her life and change her reality to what works for her. So for those of you who don't know, because some of you may be new to um, access consciousness, um, but I'll just tell you a little bit about Stephanie and then we'll talk a little bit about access consciousness and we'll get right into it. So Stephanie is a globally known photographer a radio co-host of The Good Girl's Guide to Being Wrong and Happy, and a certified facilitator of Being You Adventures and Access Consciousness. And her work is all about empowering you to live fully with ease, joy, clarity, and verve. We're going to ask Stephanie what that means. Sharing you totally with the world without giving you away. So you can have it all, and you don't have to sacrifice you to have it. I just absolutely love that message. You can have it all, and you don't have to sacrifice you. Um, cause you know, so many times we do the opposite, right? All right. So, um, <laughs> Stephanie, welcome to the show. Thank you. So I'm so glad you're here because, um, I was, I'm hoping that you can talk a little bit about, you know, a little bit about access consciousness and then your story of how you have started to change your life using some of the tools and then what some of your favorite tools are. Great. Um, so again, my name is Stephanie Richardson, and I am a certified facilitator of Access Consciousness. And Access Consciousness is basically a bunch of weird, wild, oh, you can't hear me? Oh, I can hear you. Okay. Well, let me know if anybody else can't hear me. Yeah, let us know. <laughs> I'll, I'll, turn, I'll turn it up. <laughs> so um, Access is a bunch of weird, wild, wacky tools that are so simple and easy to use that you almost can't believe their tools. And what happens is every point of view that you have creates your reality. And so if you, I'm very soft, it's very, what if I put this here? Is this better? Yes. Okay. Yes. Oh, good. Okay. Perfect. I have this, I have this fancy microphone. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess you have to put it right in front of your face. Um, so your, if your point of view creates your reality, then whatever is showing up in your life, it's better. Okay. Um, if whatever, then whatever is showing up in your life is actually showing you what your point of view is. And the good news about that is that you can change any point of view that you have you can change any point of view that you have. <laughs> and if, if you change your point of views, what you'll see is that in your life, your life will begin to change, right? Yes. Okay. So because I was quiet the first time, I basically, I'll go on, I'll do that one more time so that, so that it's easy to hear all in one space without me saying people like, oh, hey, it sounds better, closer now, you yeah. <laughs> Okay, so your point of view creates your reality. The gift of your point of view creating your reality is that you can change your point of view at any time and change your life. So we've been taught that we're at the effect of this reality. We've been taught that everything that happens to us is either brought to us by fate, by God, by damnation, <laughs> by things that are things, energies, and uh, events that are out of our control. But what we can start to become aware of as we get, begin playing with some of the tools that we'll play with tonight is that you begin to see that when you make different choices, different things begin to show up. And one of the things that starts to happen then is that you have a playmate with your life. Your life becomes a playmate. As you choose something, different things will show up. As different things show up, you get new information about the choices that you can make. And this is something that before I ever began Access Consciousness, I... I didn't have that point of view. I didn't have the point of view that life was fun and that it was actually my playmate and that by 
looking at what I was receiving in my life that I got to be aware of what choices that I had available. Choice seemed like something that was out of reach. I never could figure out what it was that I wanted. I never could figure out what the right thing was to do. And one of the gifts of access consciousness is that it has taken me out of having a right thing to choose or a wrong thing to choose or a good thing to choose or a bad thing to choose and just having choice and then being able to see what it is that shows up from that choice. Wow. <laughs> Absolutely. Wow. That's really different. And so even the things that begin to show up, if there are things that show up that are, you know, to you less than perfect, we have a bunch of tools there too, that we get to ask new questions to find out what it is that is actually showing up instead of making assumptions that what's showing up is bad or wrong or that we're being punished for something, which is a lot of people have that point of view that they've done something wrong if things are showing up less than perfect in their life. But for me, it's actually uh, some of the tools that maybe we'll play with some of those tools tonight and actually mm -hmm. begin looking at the questions that you can ask. So one of my favorite questions, well, first of all, before I go any further, so far, <laughs> I may have just dropped a couple of metaphorical bombs here. So um, is there anything about that, that that you guys have questions about? And so, you know, one of the things I just want to briefly talk about choice is that in our reality, my previous reality, I'll say, I did not think I had any choice at all. I was stuck. My life is like this. I can't change it. You know, I, there's nothing I can do. And, you know, until I got to that point where it's like, I did not come here to suffer like this. I didn't, I, this is not, this is not what I signed up for. I remember saying that specifically, this is not what I signed up for. So, you know, I said, universe, <laughs> you show me something different or else I'm out of here. Wow. And just that asking that show me something different because I, I'm not doing this, that demand. I didn't even realize I had that demand until, you know, I did it. And then things started to shift and change because they started to come into my reality. You know, it's like, oh, you know, I would see something. It's like, oh, I like that. You know, and I would, for me, it was like I would get a feeling like, oh, that's really good. You know, I want that, you know, and that's how I started. But before that, I had no choice. I mean, I was like way stuck. So that, oof, just that talking feels, about that, it's like, wow, that's heavy. <laughs> yeah. That feeling of being stuck, not having any choice, not being, not having a way out of, of whatever the things are in your life that you think that you're sort of stuck with. I know for me, I thought that I had some choices, like I could choose where I wanted to move, or I could choose what kind of job that I wanted to have. I could choose where I wanted to apply right? Mm -hmm. I could choose what jobs I wanted to apply for. I could choose who I talked to. I could choose those kind of things. But there were things that I definitely did not think I could change. One of those being my emotional state, my, the state of my thoughts, mm -hmm. <laughs> the, the, the state of my thoughts, my feelings and emotions I thought were unchangeable. And so one day, one of the things that, um, that happened is I had been on antidepressants for a long time, but each time that I had been on antidepressants, at some point I would get it. I didn't like the way that I felt, so I would stop doing them. Yeah. And so I was in another one of those, you know, I had quit doing them and I was doing okay for a little while. I had started making new friends. I had um, started doing things that I could consider positive <laughs> that should make my life better. Mm -hmm. And so I had started taking all these little steps towards being better. And I was driving down the road and, and I had this moment where it was as if on the horizon, there was a cloud of depression coming my way. And I looked at the horizon of this depression coming my way. And I went, Oh no, hmm. not again. Not again. Yeah. Now I'm going to give you a hint. If you see something on the horizon and it's coming at you, it might not belong to you. And this is tool. This is, I'll drop a tool in here real quick. And that tool is if for any thought, any feeling, any emotion, you can ask, who does this belong to? And when you ask that, if it gets lighter, it's not yours. And if it gets heavier, you can ask some new questions. Like, is there anywhere that I bought this is real and true? 
And if that gets lighter, then it's not yours and you can let it go. You can return it back to from wherever it came from. And if you'd like to, you can add consciousness to that so that wherever it came from, whatever the seed of that is, you can allow it to unravel for everyone that's attached to that. So that's one tool. But what I, I didn't have that tool at the time. What I did have was asking a question. So earlier I said that asking a question was one, is one of the biggest tools that you can use to change your life. And in that moment, I thought to ask, am I willing to be happy? Hmm. And so this is something I'll ask all of you guys. We're here because we're looking at living a life beyond mediocre. We're looking at living life as an infinite being, having infinite choice, infinite possibility available. And if that's what we're looking at, I'm not going to, I'm going to ask you a different question. I'm going to ask you the question, are you willing to live a life beyond mediocre? Now, here's what happened. When I asked myself the question, am I willing, am I truly willing to be happy? I answered like this. Yeah, of course. (laughs) That was my first answer. Yes, of course I'm willing to be happy. Who's not willing to be happy? But something was suspicious about that answer. (laughs) And what was suspicious about that answer is that I, I realized even then that I didn't look at the energy of it. I didn't Mm -hmm. look at anything in it. I looked at how I should feel and that it's right to say yes to, of course I would want to be happy because who would want to be happy? What kind of person even would I be if I wasn't willing to be happy, right? And then I was like, no, 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 no. Let me really ask. And I went in my head, but what if I say no? What if I'm not willing? Does that mean I'm going to be stuck with this forever? Mm -hmm. Am I going to be stuck being depressed forever if I'm not willing to be happy? Oh my gosh. But then I realized if I'm not willing to look at it and I'm not willing to be honest with me, I will not be, and I value honesty, right? Like that's one of my big values at the time. So if I was really valued honesty and I wasn't going to be honest with myself, I realized I could never be honest with anyone. So that for me gave me enough courage to go, all right, I'm going to be honest with me about this, even though I'm really scared to look at it. (laughs) Like, I don't want to look at this. I don't want to see that I'm not willing to be happy. Yeah. I closed my eyes. And this is funny because I was doing this all at a stop sign. So this is how long this takes. This, This doesn't take any time to ask yourself questions and totally change your life. So I was sitting there and I was like, okay, now really get the sense of what would your life be like if you were actually happy. Now I'm going to ask you to do this with me right now. You can actually close your eyes and you don't have to close your eyes. You can do it with your eyes open. Yeah. Um, I just did it with my eyes open. Yeah. (laughs) Are you, and I can ask either, are you willing to be happy or are you truly willing to live a life beyond mediocrity? Ooh. Okay. Now here is my answer. My answer turned out to be no. Because when I got the energy of being happy, what happened was it looked like it took a lot of effort. Mm-hmm. Like it was like all this, like, I'm happy. <laughs> and I was like, I'm exhausted. I was literally exhausted, exhausted. Yeah. just by the thought of this, this version of being happy. And when I saw that, I was like, I started laughing and everything lightened up for me. Mm-hmm. And I was really, truly happy for the first time that I could remember in a really long time. Because depression for me began when I was a young, young teenager. Mm -hmm. I used to sit at six, I used to sit in the bathroom and wonder what life was like, what it was to not exist. So this started really early for me. So for me to sit at a stop sign and ask just truth. Am I willing to be happy? Am I willing to have this in my life? Am I willing to make a different choice? Not will I make a different choice, just am I even willing to make a different choice? Answering no, which was the shocking thing to say, no, I'm not willing. It looks exhausting to be happy. I don't want to be exhausted and put that much effort into my life all the time. Mm -hmm. Everything lightened up. And from then on, I had access to happiness that I had never had access to before. That's awesome. Amazing. That's and so awesome. 
the tools that I used that I didn't even know of at the time was asking a question where I previously had a stuck point of view. The stuck point of view was it would be exhausting to be happy. And so when I acknowledged or I had the hard. stuck point yeah. of view. Yeah, or too hard, too much effort, too hard. It would take too much out of me. When I had that, when I recognized that that was the point of view that I had and actually really just went, oh my gosh, that's my point of view. No wonder I haven't been able to choose to be happy. It changed. Mm -hmm. So asking a question. Yeah, go ahead. So I was just going to say, you know, Caroline was saying, you know, she said, I'm willing, but I don't believe it. And she said she felt sad when asking that question. So even, even for you, Caroline, you know, you would ask more questions because you said, I'm willing, but. So that really means you're not willing, right? I, and it could be the same thing as because it's too hard or there's too many changes I would have to make in my life. I, I'm just, because I know Caroline <laughs> pretty well. So it's like, I'm, cause she, she can't. Uh, She's like, yes, yes, and yes. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, um, when the, all those thoughts come up, all those restrictions, all those limitations, you know, I really want this, but I just can't because I can't see the, the way out because of all these things that are already in place. What do you do? Well, she said two really important, like I, the, in the, that statement and what, what comes with it. Yeah. I'm willing to, but I don't believe it. First of all, if you catch yourself saying, but this is a really good clue for you. If you say, I dot, 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 but we negate everything before that. So the second we go to, but that's one of the places we can look what we put after our butts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we can look there for some clues as to where we're sticking ourselves, where we, where we're creating that, the stuck stuff. So what came after her, butt <laughs> is I don't believe it. And belief is one of the, is a really interesting thing. So so I'm going to use, ask you to use light and heavy. So is belief, if you believe in something, do you actually have access to all of your awareness? So interestingly enough, so beliefs are actually a way that we try to, we try to make ourselves. So what do we use beliefs for? I'll start with that. What do you use your beliefs for? What is a belief to you? What is a belief? It's a thought I've it? had over and over again. Or somebody told me this is what I have. Yeah. I should think, right? And what's it supposed to do? What's a belief supposed to do? It's like filling in the blanks. It's like, you know, it's like I can't, then I cannot figure it out for myself because I already have the, some answer that somebody else gave me. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 So sense. all the answers that Whew. anyone else has given you, as to what is right and wrong in your life and what should be true, which is one of the key words. All the, thi all the things people have told you that should be true, that may or may not be true. Can we destroy and uncreate everything where that, everywhere that we've used that to limit our own awareness of what's true for us? Yes. Everything that is good, bad, right, wrong, pod, pock, all nine boys, shorts, and beyond. So that's the clearing statement of access consciousness. Uh, you can find out what all of those weird words meant at www.theclearingstatement.com. Um, and if we need to talk about it more, we can, but basically that's just to clear the, it, like clear all those energies. Remember how earlier I said, there's a seed. If you have a seed, if you, pluck that seed out before it grows, basically, then you don't have a tree to deal with in the future. So the clearing statement goes back to where the trees of limitation got planted in our lives, plucks the little seed out of the soil, and makes it so that things can change dynamically in the present moment. So you're no longer the effect of all of those past beliefs coming forward into the present. Right? So all the things that have limited us in the past, that maybe we've even forgotten what they were, didn't even notice in the moment that it created a limitation. We can clear all that stuff too. So you don't have to, you know, like deal with every single little tiny point of view that you have. You know, this is a, a, a sweeping bulldozer that basically clears that stuff out question in my head said yes and the feeling was sad i'm so sorry i missed out so caroline said she asked question 
her head said yes, and the feeling was sad. About um, the so I'm I, not, I am willing, about the I am willing. Oh, remember when willing. you said to everybody to ask that question, are you willing to be happy or I don't remember now, and she asked the question, her head said yes, but her feeling was sad. Yeah. So this is, so we're going to go back. We gave you one, one tool at the very beginning. I sort of dropped it in there and it's, who does this belong to? So all the feelings that you have that you're carrying around for everyone, <laughs> how many feelings, how many feelings are you using that against you that aren't even yours? Mm -hmm. So everything that is times a God's alien will you destroy and uncreate it all. Yes. Good, bad, right, wrong, pop, pop, all nine boys, shorts, and beyonds. So here's a really interesting thing. If I'm asking you to choose to, to be beyond mediocre, it's like, what if you could create a life that was well beyond mediocre? Would you be willing to do that? That was, based, that was the question in a different form. And if I'm asking you to do that, and what you're aware of is all of the people who don't have that as a choice, mm -hmm. what kind of feelings do you think you might have? come up so Ugh. the so this is one of the amazing things about mediocrity is mediocrity is is basically taking a survey of the entire planet for every choice that you go to make you first have to survey the entire planet see who can go along with you who can't go along with you see if it's going to fit within the median of what everyone's allowed to choose you literally are making the mediumist choice you can and so if if mediocrity is choosing the medium choice where where most people can choose there and i ask you if you're willing to create beyond it mm -hmm. Hell yeah. It may also give you a lot of awareness of all the things you haven't chosen in your life. So it gives you awareness of a bunch of stuff, what you haven't yet chosen that you could have chosen, the kindness that you could have in your life that maybe you haven't had in your life because it wasn't mediocre, <laughs> mm -hmm. the kind of joy you could have in your life that maybe you haven't chosen because it wouldn't have been mediocre, it wouldn't have matched, it wouldn't have been, it wouldn't have been what other people could choose and you didn't want to leave anyone behind. <laughs> how many different ways have you tried not to leave anyone behind? And how many ways have we been taught that that's kind? Is it? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to tell you it's not. Maybe for you it is. Maybe for you, staying mediocre is the only choice that you have. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Everything that brings up. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yes. Good, bad, right, wrong, pod, poc, all nine boys, shorts, and beyonds. That was a lie just then. I lied to you. That's not your only choice. You can make other choices, but one of the things that may come up when you make a new choice is more awareness of what everyone has been choosing. One of the things that I've noticed doing all these mediocrity clearings is that there are lots of things that I decided at one point or another that I did not want to be aware of. I did not want to be aware of the choices that other people couldn't have. I didn't want to be aware that other people would choose meanness and unkindness and unhappiness and poverty and anxiety. I didn't, I wanted to believe that it was a choice that people didn't have because if I believed it was a choice people didn't have, then I couldn't see that we inflicted this amount of pain and devastation on ourselves and each other every single day. So if, if you begin to choose beyond mediocre, one of the first things that may come up is awareness of what mediocrity creates. And it may be sadness, it may be anger, it may be frustration, it may be all the things that you've tried to hide from yourself your entire life that you could choose out of and beyond that you haven't yet done so. So amazing, ev wow. Everywhere that we've used those thoughts, feelings, and emotions as the, as the ball and chain mm -hmm. <laughs> just dragging on the bottom of like the sludge ocean. Can we destroy and uncreate all that? Yes. Tons of God's saying good, bad, right, round, pop, pop, all nine, boys, shorts, and yards. So all the judgments, all the agendas, all the inventions, and all the lies that you're using to maintain and entrain to any of those points of view, will you destroy and uncreate all that, please? Yes. Times a godzillion. Good, bad, right, rom, pot, pot, all nine boy shorts and beyonds. Ooh. Oh. 
Okay. Does yeah. Do, did you do you want to do the um? I was, <laughs> do you want to do the jail um stuff? The jail I clearings. Was, I was sneaking it in there. <laughs> That's what it reminded me. It's like oh, the jail clearings. Yeah. <laughs> um. But, but before we do that, let, let, let's just tune in to everybody and see you know how is that working for you guys? You guys do any of you have any questions so far? Um. I was gonna say raise I your did hand. Forget but you to say. Yeah, I did forget to say, don't take everything I say seriously. Hmm. Some of what I say is intentionally just funny or to poke buttons or to bring up an energy so that we can clear and change it. So if some of you went, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, oh, hold on. So, all right. So if you have any questions, just write them into the chat or unmute yourself, you know? Or like, you know, just wave, you know, frantically and <laughs> You're I also hope. welcome to drool in the chat. Just let <laughs> us know what's going on for you. You can just type in D R O O O O O L. Exactly. <laughs> whatever, whatever it takes. Um all right. So yeah, I wanted to quickly <laughs> possible Yeah, thank you, Caroline. <laughs> all right, I think she's doing good. I think you're doing okay, Caroline, right? She's like, well, I think. Yeah, good. Um, yeah, so let's do the jail clearing and maybe, um, God, I'm just having so much t intensity <laughs> stuff, stuff is doing stuff. So I was like, Hmm, who does this belong to? <laughs> well, let's, well, let's, can we play with that then? Yeah, let's, let's so, do that. Okay, cool. So we started clearing this stuff and then all of a sudden intensity. Yes. Now, Here's one of the, here's one of the places I see a lot of people stop. So when you perceive intensity and I use the word perceive instead of feel intensity, <laughs> um, when you perceive intensity, one of the things that I see a lot of people do is decide that it's theirs immediately. And there's something that they must do about it. And something's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so there's nothing wrong by thinking that something's wrong, but it is a place where you actually have a different choice available. So the first thing you want to do when intensity comes up, and for some people, intensity may be that you feel like all of a sudden your entire body is actually tense. Intensity. <laughs> you may feel you're like this. Mm -hmm. uh, your jaw may tighten up. You may feel, you know, sensations in your head or in your chest or in your stomach, or you may want to throw up, or you may, anytime these don't make an assumption. You will probably, but this is actually a place that is, um, it's a choice that you have that's showing up for you. Okay. So the second that something comes up, don't assume that you have the flu. Don't assume that you're getting a migraine. Don't assume that, that you're, you're about to, that you're going to actually vomit. Although sometimes I keep buckets nearby for really intense <laughs> classes. Um, when an intensity comes up, and that can be, you can call it pain. You can call it anything you want to call it. We ask more questions. So what's up? Yes. What is going on? So, it, you know, what does it feel like to you? <laughs> well, I'm, I have like chills and cold all over where, you know, normally like a while ago, I'm like burning hot and it's like, okay. So this is just energy flowing through me right because i'm allowing it to flow through me i'm not letting it get stuck in me just like all right bring it on right so for me that's like it's clearing it's clearing out those places where i was stuck maybe or had some sort of it's like i can't even talk i'm like so cold it's like i'm like jittering on the inside you know it's like okay so this can happen there's something called a vortex and um and a vortex is when you all of a sudden are connected with oneness and it can feel like either a cool spring breeze or it can feel like you just got put in a freezer. That's it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> and it is when stuff is blowing off so fast um, because you're, you're basically in oneness. And so anything that you have as a limitation in that moment begins to just evaporate off of you. I keep seeing images of a, a there's a, um, there are a few different movies where all of a sudden the, the bits and pieces of, of ick that are mm -hmm. around a person all of a sudden start flying off. Or in the movie Lucy, did anybody see that movie? Where I did all of see a sudden Lucy, yes. She starts flying apart. Right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exploding. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
exploding into oneness. Um, cool. So if, if you have any of that stuff going on, you can ask, oh, cool. What is this? What can I do with it? So this is a really cool thing. If you have intensity in your body, yeah, expand is one of the things you can do. Caroline in the chat just said you can expand. So if you're going, let's walk through a couple of tools. So this can even happen if you have intensity when you walk into a room, for instance. If you walk into work or you walk into home, you may have the sense that there's, eh, I'm sleepy, please help. <laughs> I'm yawning too now. So it's like, yeah, that's all part of it or can cool. be part of it. Cool. Um, and Jackie, it's okay if you get sleepy. There's some times where I actually do whenever I'm doing a class or doing a clearing night, not while I'm giving one, but whenever I'm in one, sometimes I do go ahead and let my body sleep. Um, there's nothing wrong with being sleepy. And um, let's say, like, let's play with it for a second and let's go all the energy of sleepy. First of all, is it sleepy or is your body relaxing? As soon as I expanded, I yawned. So release, that was from Caroline. So then Jackie, back to Jackie. So she's relaxing. So here's one of the amazing things. How much relaxation do you actually have in your life? A lot, a little, none, <laughs> less than none. <laughs> a lot of our bodies um, run on not enough relaxation from Cindy. Yeah. So a lot of us put a lot of pressure on our bodies and a lot of us don't give ourselves much chance to relax or have ease. We run on pressure. We run on force. And one of the things that can happen is as we begin tapping into this different energy, what did we begin with? We began by asking, would you be willing to, first of all, would you be willing to be happy? I snuck that one in, even if you weren't running it. We asked if you'd be willing and if you would choose, um, Okay. Uh, if you would choose beyond mediocrity, relaxation is actually far beyond mediocrity. So we started activating energies that were beyond mediocrity and allowing for them to begin to embody. And so when your body starts relaxing, it can be foreign. It can feel like you're sleepy. Um, so that's why we ask another question. We go, are you actually sleepy or are you relaxed is one of the questions you can begin to ask. So is feeling sleepy vortexing? Not necessarily. Sometimes it's just the body going, Hey, Hey buddy, go to sleep. I want to, I want to receive here. <laughs> Sometimes your body is just like, Hey, it's okay. You can just take a nap. You receive even when you're sleeping. So it doesn't matter whether your body goes to sleep or you lay down, you, you know, it, you still receive anyway. As a matter of fact, sometimes we receive more because our thinking mind is out of the way. Now, I'm not saying you have to sleep through every class you ever do. I'm just saying that sometimes if that's what your body requires, I wonder what would happen if we said yes from time to time to what our body's asking for. But you can't ask, body, are you sleepy or is this me? <laughs> Your body may be like, no, I'm fine. I'm actually just kind of relaxed. We can talk to our, for anybody who um, doesn't know, you can talk to your body. So a lot of us don't know that. Uh, and you can begin talking with your body by using the tools we've used already, by using the light and heavy. So you can ask yes or no questions of your body and receive more information about what's up. And we can do that. We began this conversation by talking about intensity and what you can do with it. So you can expand it. So if you have a pain in your body right now, one of the things you can do. Yep. Okay, good. Good job, everybody. Yeah, there you go. All right, you got it. So what you can do is pretend almost like you have little gecko fingers. So geckos have sticky fingers. They stick to anything. And you can grab the edges of whatever that pain is. And now pull it out, expand it. And mm -hmm. some people are like, well, no, don't, don't make me make pain bigger. We're not. Don't worry. Keep expanding it. Now, oh, there you go. Oh, okay, good, good. I got even more chills than I had already. I didn't know that was possible. Keep expanding. Okay, now you can expand it beyond your gecko fingers and to the size of the room. If you're already bigger than that, don't come into the room. Just keep going. Um, and so to the, all the four, the eight corners of the room, 
Yep. And then down into the earth and then, yep. And then to the size of a city block. Yep. And then to the size <laughs> of the state that you're in Woo! and down into the earth and into the atmosphere and into, and then the size of the continent that you're on and down into the earth and out into the atmosphere and then the hemisphere that you're in and all the way into the earth and out into the atmosphere and then beyond the edges of the entirety of the earth and it keep expanding beyond the earth and keep going Woo! further, further. Yeah, cool. So did the pain change at all? Or the, the pain, the intensity, the feeling in your body, did it change at all? <sighs> So when you expand things out like that, what happens is anything that is actually true cannot hold itself in place when you do that. So anything that's based on a point of view, anything, no, it doesn't feel different. Um, so anything that's based on a point of view, anything that's not true cannot hold itself together. So Caroline, you want to tell me a little bit more? It doesn't feel any different. What are we, what did we expand with you? <laughs> Where did you go, Caroline? How far did you go? Did you even go beyond your body? And so, you know. I kind of want to ask what it is she was, what, what was it that you were actually, what were we changing? What was that? Right. Left shoulder ah. pain did not change. I felt I did go way beyond. So then this would be, I'm going to ask, is it yours? And did you expand the pain or did you just expand? Because I want you to expand the pain. Hmm. Good question. This, this, it is mine. Oh, cool. So everywhere you bought it as yours, will you destroy and uncreate it all? Do, 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 do. I felt have a fracture. Is this not mine? <laughs> you felt you have a fracture or you do have a fracture? Well, so, okay. So this is something really you have. Okay, cool. Um, so what is your body at? So this is a really interesting, this may be beyond the scope of the time that we have to actually talk about having a fracture. So with the fracture, so with the, with that, you actually can use a lot of different energies that will assist your body in changing faster than it's supposed to. Um, so we can talk about that another time. It is a little beyond the scope of today, but that is definitely well beyond mediocre. <laughs> The healing capacities that any of us have is well beyond mediocre. It is miraculous and strange. And so, um, so today we, we, won't, we won't deal with that. But, um, but did everybody else that wasn't dealing with a fracture? <laughs> and I also do want to say, do play with expanding the fra actually getting the energy of the fracture, not the fracture itself, but the energy of the fracture and expand that out. Okay. So grab on to the energy of the fracture and expand it out. Cool. Cool. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And so like, I'm not, I'm no longer cold. I'm just my normal, regular, <laughs> regular warm. Cool. Um, no hot flashes <laughs> at the moment, just regular warmth. Um, <laughs> but when you do expand out, I, I, you know, I, I find that for, for myself, when I expand out, even sometimes whatever thought or feeling or emotion I was having, it's gone. Like I'm just space, you know, and I was doing this exercise earlier with um, my other group call and it was like, it was such a beautiful space. I didn't even want to come back, you know, and what would it take for all of us to experience that on a regular basis and choose that for ourselves instead of going into the trauma and the drama and the, and the judgment and, the, and the stuckness again. Ooh. Okay. I love this. 
So the energy that you get whenever you do the expand out exercise, the energy that was just, that was just present with all of us, what would it be like if we now take that energy and actually ask for it to be present throughout our entire lives? Mm -hmm. Ah, let it seep into your banking account. Let it seep into, yeah, the (laughs) deepest, darkest areas that you feel like will never change. Allow that space and ease to actually infiltrate all of those places too. Woo, that's fun. Mm. Oh, that's yummy. Cool. So more importantly than us, it can seem like if we're doing an exercise like this, it can seem like this is the thing that's actually creating the change. But I want to be really clear. Anytime that we're doing an exercise like this, you're making a choice to have a different reality. Mm -hmm. Choice is actually greater than any processing that we can do. It, It trumps basically it trumps anything. We live in a free will universe and that's part of you being able to choose the life you'd like to have. So we play with energy in different ways by expanding out, asking who does this belong to? Each one of those, the underlying similarity is that it's you making a choice. Yeah. Even though choices seem like they should be like, I'm making the choice to have a million dollars. (laughs) But it really, can it can be Go that, but, but sometimes even when you think about, oh, I would love to have a million dollars, then uh, some other thoughts come up first, you know? So we're not really choosing it because as soon as I say, oh, I would love to have a million dollars, but then my son's going to want the money, but then where am I supposed to put it so I don't lose it, you know? And then, you know, all these things come up. So then that energy of, oh, what would it take to have a million dollars is gone. Now it's the, it's the other energies of my son's going to ask me for money for sure. Absolutely. My aunt's going to ask me for money. Absolutely. And then how do I store it and keep it and, 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 and make it grow in the bank account and not pay interest and blah, blah, blah. Like all that stuff comes up, right? Oh, well, this is one of my favorite. When I said earlier that we get to play with our lives, this is one of the things that when I first started doing access um, seemed like a problem that now I get really excited about. Because when I make a new choice, one of the first things that can show up is all that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Why would that be a gift? Why on God's green earth would that be a gift? To me, it's a gift because now all of the points of view that haven't allowed that to come to fruition are showing up, which means I have access to them and I can change them. Yeah. So just because they come up, I don't, you don't have to hide them. You don't have to try and get rid of them. You can actually look at them, ask new questions and change them for good instead of just trying to think more positively about it or ignore that they're there or any of those kinds of things that we've had as, as tools or journal about it for 10 years. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. And so, so they do become a gift because they, they show you where you still may have some limitations, right? Some, some fixed points of view. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Look at that. And then you can change it because before that, you don't even have the awareness that you have that point of view. Yeah. So, so it is a gift because every, every point of view that comes up when you've made a new choice is actually showing you, first of all, you did make a new choice. You made a new choice enough that now all the stuff that doesn't allow you to have it is showing up for you to change and clear. That's mm-hmm. pretty cool. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, hey, I was in the way. And you're like, oh, good. All right. See you later. (laughs) You know, what if it was like bad company finally leaving? So you still have to say goodbye to them as they go out the front door, right? Yes. (laughs) Gotta lock the door behind them. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) But, you know, it basically is like that. Imagine that you had a million terrible, like, family members and frenemies at your house forever. And then all of a sudden you went, oh, my gosh. I would like to live in this house by myself. You yeah. got to let them go, right? <laughs> so what do you do? I know there's a tool, so I'll, I'll let you share yeah. that tool. <laughs> when, you well, have, when you have an interesting point of view, it's like, ah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, cool. So when the int- that, that, this is one of, one of your other, other tools that you can use. Interesting point of view. 
So what if as you know, each smelly family member and each mean frenemy is walking out the front door, it was just an interesting point of view. So basically when you see it, so when you go, oh my gosh, where am I going to put all the money? You can go, <laughs> interesting point of view. I have that interesting point of view. Mm -hmm. What other question could I ask here that would be a generative question? What right. other question could I ask here that would allow this to come to fruition? And that. then you're like, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. And everything that is good, bad, right, wrong, pop, pop, all nine, boy shorts and beyonds. And so next thing that comes up, everybody's going to ask me for money. <laughs> and then you can go, truth, is it mine? A tool from earlier. Is that mine? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No. And then it comes back. And then you're like, ah, I know it's not mine. And you're like, but I asked, is it mine? And I didn't really believe it when I heard no. <laughs> so now I'm going to try another tool. If one tool's not working for you, just use another one. Right. So if you just use another one, you can use any tool at any moment. So we're going to move to another one because we bought it as ours for a second again. We got rid of it and then we thought it came back. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to go interesting point of view. I have this interesting point of view that everybody's going to want my money. Oh, wait, that's awareness. Everybody is going to want my money. Ah, so what's my actual point of view here? My actual point of view is I don't want to say no. Mm -hmm. Ah, I'm going to have to say no. And I don't want to say no, mm -hmm. or I'm going to have to say yes. And I don't want to say yes. I don't want to say yes. Yep. <laughs> right. Yep. So so then we get to go, oh, interesting point of view that I think I have to say yes. And I don't want to say yes. That's, <laughs> I didn't think I had a choice there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everything that is good, bad, right, wrong, pop, pop, all nine, boy, shorts, meons, all the judgments, agendas, inventions, and lies. Holding any and all of that in place. Good, bad, right, wrong, pop, pop, all nine, boy, shorts, and beyonds. You snuck it in. I did. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So the cool thing is, so you heard me just put a whole bunch of tools together and that's, that's basically how this works. There's a bunch of very simple tools and it sounds complicated, but really all I'm doing is looking at what will change the energy. Did this question that I just asked, did it change the energy? If it did, cool. That's done. That's it. Yep. If it didn't for some reason, or what every time you go to clear it, it's not changing. This is where we look at it from, begin to look at it from a different point of view and ask another question or use a different tool or phone a friend or a facilitator. <laughs> <laughs> help, I need help. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have a question. What if points of view all positive and it's still not coming into fruition? Well, here's the weird part. We can have a positive point of view that also keeps things stuck. Yeah, limited. Yeah. So a positive point of view doesn't necessarily open the door to infinite possibility, especially if we have points of view of what positive is or what's allowed to happen if something's good or what is allowed to happen if something is positive or if something's right. We oftentimes have a lot more points of view about what's right, good, and true than we even do about what's bad because we basically just dump everything we think is bad in one category and just call it bad. Whereas the good stuff that we're a little more attached to it because we finally think we may have gotten something right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't want to let go of this. I finally got something right. <laughs> so you can't destroy something that's true. So you might as well destroy all the good points of view too, all mm -hmm. the right points of view too, all the positive points of view too, because you cannot destroy something that's actually true. So it's cool. Just destroy it all. Exactly. Like everything that is good, bad, right, wrong, pop, pop, all nine, boy, shorts, and beyonds. I know that more money is coming to me. Ugh, destroy and uncreate all that. Good, bad, right, wrong, pop, pop, all nine, boy, shorts, and beyonds. How can I have more money than I know what to do with? Now there's a question. So if instead of the positive points of view, you put in place a question, your life and mm -hmm. what you receive can expand exponentially as much as the universe does. The universe is constantly expand, or not constantly actually, uh, the universe is ever expanding. If the uh, universe is ever expanding and your life isn't, 
you are not following the laws of the universe. <laughs> I love that. You know, like, it, it took me like a second. That? Yeah. It's like, it took me a second to get that. And it's like, huh, what, what, what? And then it's like, yeah. I caught up. It's like, oh. so, so a positive point of view is, a, is stuck. It is not an ever expanding possibility. The yeah. universe actually is an ever expanding possibility. Science is even seeing that the universe is an ever expanding possibility. So your life could be like the, the way the universe works, <laughs> literally, your life is an ever expanding possibility if you choose it. Any point of view that you use keeps you from having an ever expanding possibility as your life. So why not get rid of them all? That's brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. And so now when you look at your life, you know, because I'm looking at my life and how it's been for the past five, six years, it's ever expanding and it's expanding even more. And but then there's like, <sighs> But, there was, but then it's like, okay, more, just, just keep going. You know, it's like, what else can I create? What else would be fun for me? And so that's the thing is like, what's fun for you? Not necessarily what's positive, but what's fun, what brings you joy. And it's bringing you joy right now, not bringing you joy in the future, but what's bringing you joy right now as well, right? Brilliant. Because we think, so, you know, things in the future are going to bring us joy, but you got to have that joy now. And I know we're like, that's like even more beyond what we want to talk about today, but it's like, ah, there's just so much more possible and so much more um, that we can expand into uh, the more that we let go of those points of view that are fixed, whether they're good or bad, right, wrong, positive or negative. But honestly, if your life is not fun and joyful and expanding, you're stuck somewhere. Right. There's some, there's some points of view that you have that are keeping you stuck. Right. I, it's good news to me. <laughs> and so those can be changed. Um, we're going to, we're going to talk a little bit more in a second, but it's like, oh my God, this, this has been such a wonderful conversation. So much fun. And yeah, exactly. What, uh, what Cindy was saying, Stephanie, you cracked me up. Thanks for the laughs. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I knew that you were going to be like, I mean, you know, really lots of fun, you know, so, 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 so looking forward to this. Um, but, and Stephanie has uh, more ways for you to create with her. So <laughs> if you're on the live page, you can just click on the special offer button and there should, it should be working now. So Stephanie, do you want to talk just, well, hold on, I can't even get there. Talk about the special offer that you have for us for our, our brilliant people who are here. It's the, it's the being brilliant, being seen offer, right? Yes. Package. So one of the things that a lot of people ask me for, um, everybody wants to know, well, well, what's your specialty? And I'm like, I, my specialty is anything that you want to have in your life is contributing to you having it, any of it that you want. But what people want to know most from me is about being seen and being in front of the camera and being right. Like that kind of thing. Since mm -hmm. I'm a photographer. Um, so I, I hesitate to do the being in front of the camera thing. Cause I think it's limited. So I was like, what can I create? So here's using the tools. What can I create that would allow for those people to get what they desire, but for me to really be able to um, contribute that whole expanded, ever expanding energy to everybody who's on this call? What, what can I do that both overlaps the being seen with the, the expansion and non-mediocrity that we're choosing on this call? Mm -hmm. And so I created um, a, a, a series. It's not a series. You don't have to do them all in a row. Um, so you guys are offered this as a, an entire package. Other people are going to be able to do just one of them at a time, but for the price that you're getting all six of these. So there's six hour long webinars about being you and being seen on camera and off. So basically being more of you in the world. Um, no matter who's looking, no matter who's present. Cause one of the things that I see is, is that people often ask the whole thing about being in front of the camera is what if somebody sees me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what if somebody sees me being great? What if somebody sees me being happy? What if somebody sees me, um, looking like I'm enjoying myself being beautiful? What if somebody judges me for something, which, you know, people can't, judge you like it, the whole thing is you have to be seen for them to judge you yeah. right 
So how much do we all hide so that we don't have to deal with that judgment? I would love if everyone was able to show up and be seen as them, no matter who is in the room or no matter who is watching. This entire series is all about that. It also includes two videos that are going to be actually about being in front of the camera and that's called not a model. <laughs> <laughs> so there's, there's two, we'll be covering different topics. We'll have a free one of those tomorrow. If you want to hop on, hop on that. Um, and so the not a model series is basically like, I'm not a model and here I am in front of the lens, but it should be fun for everybody, regardless of whether, you know, somebody tries to take a selfie with you while you're out to lunch and you hate it to whether you're trying to create a business and you really want to show up yeah. as you and invite people to your business with the energy that you are. So it'll be about all of that. Oh, love it. And I just, I wish Stephanie lived closer. I mean, like she's on the other continent so far away. <laughs> I am so far away. <laughs> I miss seeing you. <laughs> Cause I'm like now in Europe and Stephanie doesn't come to Europe. She just stays in the U S you know, I don't, I come to Europe. I come to Europe a lot. And I was just down in Brazil too. I know. So yesterday she was in Brazil tomorrow, I guess so she's going to Costa Rica. So she's like, <laughs> So you were sandwiched in in between, you know, so it's just like brilliant. Love it. Thank you. Um, Caroline, I look forward. Caroline just said she's coming. She got the package. She yeah. says, I want to show up as me. Um, I so look forward to having you with us. That'll be so fun, Caroline. Oh, you will love Caroline. You will just love her. And absolutely. I this do is, already. Yeah. <laughs> and Caroline, yeah, this will help you to show up more so that you can do all the beautiful work that you want to do. Because I know that you're just itching to get out there and do your thing, right? So I love her. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Um, all right. So I know we're already almost at the, well, we're at the top of the hour already. Whew. So uh, just really quickly, though, if anybody else has any other questions that they want to ask Stephanie about showing up about living beyond mediocrity, you know, into infinite possibility. And just some of the, the tools that we shared with you all today, if anybody has a question about that, just shout, say, hey, I have a question. <laughs> just unmute yourself. Um, and if not, then I just want to ask Stephanie just really quickly, um, is there, I was going to say, I always ask my guests, hey, do you have any last words of wisdom for us? But it's, it's basically any, anything else that's coming up for you that you think that we, it would, we would benefit from hearing and knowing so that we can start implementing it right away so that we can start to create our life. Oh, this, I hope this isn't too long of one. You mentioned it earlier and it's one of my favorite tools. So if... So when we do all this clearing, the next really big part for me is immediately adding choosing to create. Mm -hmm. So we can clear all day long, but actually what creates your new life is creating. Yeah. But a lot of us don't know where to start. And the tool that you brought up that I use in my life whenever I, when I don't have a cognitive idea of what it is I'd like to have is what I call shopping for reality. And so one of the things, your homework, should you choose to accept it, <laughs> is, is to literally take yourself on a little hunting excursions and not, not to kill things, but to <laughs> hunt for the things that you would like that, that bring up that sense for you of, oh, that, mm -hmm. oh, look at that. Oh, that's so beautiful. What about that beauty could I add to my life right now? Oh, wait, I just did because I looked at it and enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. But how else can I add this energy to my life starting right now? And then you maybe continue walking. So give yourself, maybe take yourself to the museum. Maybe take yourself to a high-end shopping center. Maybe take yourself to the furniture store. Maybe take yourself to the botanical gardens or the zoo. Or maybe take yourself to the park. Or maybe take yourself to the middle of the city and see what you find. Mm -hmm. And begin looking around you with curiosity. Is there any, anything here that I would like to add to my life? And begin looking for those moments of, oh, that, what is that? What mm -hmm. is it about that that lights me up? Asking new questions, what is it about that that lights me up? What can I add right now to my life that will add more of that to my life? 
And so this way, even without a cognitive idea of what it is that you're looking to have or looking to choose, you can begin adding both the energies and even maybe you find some things you want to add to your life, but you begin adding that energy to your life right away. And so now, in addition to clearing the stuff that's been limiting you, you also are now adding more of what will create a magnificent, phenomenal life as you move mm-hmm. forward. I love it. Beautiful. And, and you know, it's, it's amazing what shows up when you start to do that. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm blessed and I chose it to live in this beautiful city, Vienna. And so um, we go to the museum, we walk around downtown. I, I absolutely love it. Just this, it gives me so much space and just so much joy when I'm walking around the city and just enjoying the sites and the buildings and the architecture and the history. And tomorrow we're going to an art auction. I'm so excited. <laughs> oh, oh, that's a good idea too. Uh, there are a whole bunch of online auction sites. Yes. And those are really fun because you can click through and you can look and even discover more of what you like. Oh, well, do I like, oh, look, oh, it turns out I see Baroque stuff and I'm like, oh, I oh, like Baroque stuff. Sexy. <laughs> I'll have to take some pictures of my room because we recently bought um, old furniture that we actually saw in a uh, auction house and it's like oh that would be really nice and then we didn't buy it there but my husband bought it somewhere else and was like oh, we got the idea there right yeah cool and so you know just doing that it just it opens up your awareness it opens up your space to of what you like and and what brings you joy and what feels good right so tomorrow we my husband's gonna actually bid on a painting a <laughs> 19th century <laughs> painting so we're gonna <laughs> art we love art so but we didn't know that until just recently when we started to look around and see what else is possible right so this is a new thing for us but you know it's like so so try something new try something different and see what brings you excitement and joy and what's fun for you and then ask okay what else is possible here and what else can i add to my life and what else would be fun for me? And I just went to Spain last weekend. It's like, oh my God, I loved it. It's like so yummy. It's like, oh my God, can I do that again? You know, and what else is fun like that? Right. But I didn't know before I went that it was going to be fun. I was just going to see family. It's like, ah, oh, I love it. So, you know, you never know until you start doing something different. So what else can I add to my life? What can I be or do different today to change my reality? That might be a little bit beyond the scope, but you heard it. You heard it. I said it. All right, what can I be or do different today? There's so many things that you can ask. This is just about asking and not looking for the answer, right? Just asking and being the space and seeing what shows up next after and that. Know, and know that you'll know it when you see it. Yes, when you'll you know it, it when you see you'll it. You'll know. You will smile. You will in, it will change something about you. You will look. And if you've never had that sense before, that that going out and playing and asking the questions that i mean that will begin to show you and maybe go places you haven't considered before maybe for you it, it maybe either you haven't gone high end enough or you haven't slummed it enough <laughs> and look what i just bought in spain oh, I don't know if you can see that it's oh, like, it's so glorious it's like oh i saw it it's like oh i have to have it <laughs> that's glorious i love it yeah and it was my anniversary gift to me because my husband wasn't with me so it's my anniversary gift to me <laughs> it's like oh yeah that's fun so you know <laughs> just have fun celebrate. with life yeah yeah so I was celebrating that was this. a celebration celebrate. <laughs> yeah so how can you celebrate your life today right cool. we can you know like we could ask a million other questions but um all right, stephanie anything else you'd like to say and add <laughs> I'm going to be quiet for a moment because I can talk I, for no, hours too. No, I mean, I could talk. Yeah, together we could we could do a few weeks without stopping. So, <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. But I do, I, I do want to um, uh, suggest, you know, you guys take a look at the special offer again. It'll be in the email that's going to go out later tonight and it'll be on the replay page. So please do take a look at that. And um, Stephanie's gift will be on the gifts page so you can take advantage of that as well so there's different ways that you can play with Stephanie and then just remember to each and every one of these I mean as you go and you you watch more I assume you're going to be watching and playing with the other facilitators every single thing that you participate in is different because you're there yeah 
everything that we do as access facilitators is created by you showing up in the questions that you ask and what you're curious about. So what I said to all of you is totally different than what I would say to anybody else on the planet because you uniquely having the questions that you have create what, what shows up. So every class that you choose is different because you're there and it becomes exactly what you've been asking for. (laughs) (laughs) So just know that as you go forward, when you show up, the world is different and we are so grateful that you've shown up. Absolutely. Thank you. And as you choose to join these calls with the different facilitators, um, everything will be different. And as you choose and you choose and you choose, start to see what is changing in your life and start to choose what is right for you. Okay. So that's, I I say that often and always choose what's right for you. Choose what's light, choose what's expansive, choose what's joyful. Have fun. All right, everyone. (laughs) Thank you so much. And until next time, continue to live your life filled with joy, peace, love, abundance, and happiness. Sending you all much love and blessings always. Bye for now, everyone. Thank you so much, Stephanie. This was so much fun. Thank you. (laughs) Bye everyone.